Thank you so much for watching Eat and Talk. I want to make sure you guys know where to find us. We are currently on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify, and we're completely free for you to listen to. So make sure you check out all of our channels and subscribe to it. Also, if you want to further support us, you can find us at EdenTalkMN.com, where we also have available merch for you guys and links to all of our channels. Thank you so much for watching. Hey everybody, welcome back to Eat and Talk. I'm Yusra, and once again, as noted, I'm solo because I usually have a co-host, um, but he is not here today. Shout out to Gilbert. Um, I'm really excited. This is so refreshing that I have a strong woman here. Um, <laughs> don't <laughs> laugh, you know it's true. I have no. I have Brittany from Victory Biz Solutions, and um, I just really, I'm gonna let her introduce herself and kind of go over everything, but I just really want to give her her flowers while she's here. Brittany is phenomenal. Shout out to Moosey. Um, he introduced Don't me to her. <laughs> he introduced <laughs> me to her with no warning. <laughs> and I called him right after and I was like, when I, you said you were introducing me to your account, that this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> But she keeps it real 100%. She is hands down and not just comparing her to other women, but just hands down the best accountant in the city. So if you guys need an accountant, you need to tap in with her. But I'll let her introduce herself. Who are you? Well, I'm Brittany, the owner of Victory Business girl. Solutions. <laughs> We're located on Lynn Lake in yeah. a, a town area, so be it. Yeah. Um, we're like a three, four person team right now. We focus on small business accounting, um, mainly for minority owned businesses, small women owned businesses. Um, we don't work with bigger businesses. Sometimes we do, typically, it depends. Mm -hmm. Grandfathered in. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we've grown significantly um, just through partnerships that we've been working with, word of mouth. I don't even know what else like yeah just, they grew we won't a stop lot. growing they grew a lot and they're continuing to grow and i was just asking her like off camera girl how do you do it like how do you do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> no seriously um but i want to take it back so first i kind of want to touch back um personally how you got into all of this you know what got you into it why are you so passionate about it and then we're gonna kind of touch more on victory Bit solutions yeah i don't know what really got me into it i just always been good with numbers mm -hmm. um good with that side of the stuff i'm very strategic and logical so the yeah. business side of stuff is always second nature to me yeah um but really with the small businesses i just seen that there's a gap yeah these people don't have someone to talk to and relate to and like someone that will really give them advice that's gonna benefit them mm -hmm. versus what's gonna benefit that person. Yeah. So like I have clients that come to me and I'm like, you ain't ready for that service yet. Mm -hmm. um, so-and-so told you that, but it's not true. Mm -hmm. You're not ready for a thousand dollar accounting package, but guess what? So-and-so down the road would've took that money. Yeah. So it's those things. I'm very honest with clients straight up myself. Yeah. I'm like, oh girl, follow me on Instagram. You might see me, you know, <laughs> down at the bar next yeah. weekend, but just say hi, you know, yeah. it's whatever. So. <laughs> Yeah. very authentic with clients too and it builds that relationship mm -hmm. right um yeah. kind of like we we're saying i'm mm -hmm. like i'm 100 mm -hmm. yeah what you get you hear what you hear yeah um and it's just there's that gap yeah people aren't especially not accountants there's not a lot of black accountants mm -hmm. who really have that relationship community base they're good at what they do yeah. but they're not personable and Absolutely. a lot of people say that they feel like they're working with robots and it's like girl call me <laughs> yeah no <laughs> and for real that's and that's really what defers you was like you know calling you was um calling someone that you feel like you could 100 percent trust because you keep it 100 mm percent -hmm. honest with them you're 100 percent yourself um and you're not afraid to tell them you know the truth like you don't care about just like you could easily finesse somebody out of oh my god you know <laughs> thousands of dollars oh my god i hear it all the time they're like i paid someone twenty five hundred dollars yeah. to pay to to file this form i said for three pages and yeah. you just put your social signature on it <laughs> yeah i paid 2500 i'm like yeah it's crazy oh my god i'm like okay yeah don't ever do that again yeah, yeah. so l let's talk a little bit about that like why is it important um when dealing with clients for because there are a lot of people who want to come into this industry that are learning about like accounting and how to do taxes and all of that so why is it important to keep it 100 because everybody else don't 
Yeah. It's as simple as that. I have clients that come to me with questions on stuff I really don't know about. They're like, oh, you know, I'm starting a business doing this and I know there's a certain way of doing something. I tell people straight up, I'm like, I honestly have no idea, mm -hmm. but I'll call you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I have an answer for you or I'll call somebody if I need to, but I don't know what you're even talking about right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like to fake it till they make it, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, that's the, um, yeah. That's what everybody do. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't do that. All yeah. the time. It's just not reasonable. And I feel more comfortable telling people I don't know. And or if I am doing something, I tell them straight up, like, look, I probably messed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I probably did. But they know it. They're gonna come straight to me, like, you know what, you're right. Yeah. You you messed up and they know I'm gonna fix it, right? Mm -hmm. But if I sit here with my head high and I'm like, oh, I'm doing it right, I'm doing everything right, I'm always right. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna come to me or they don't, you know. It's the relationship exactly. thing too. And if I do mess up, everybody messes up. You're playing with numbers. I can easily do an eight instead of a nine. I tell clients this all the time. I'm gonna mess up, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna tell you when I mess up. I'm not gonna wait till you find out that I messed up. Yeah. And that happens years down the road. Yeah, and I love that because you know, you're know you not proving to somebody like, hey, I'm not perfect, but I'm gonna make this work and I'm helping exactly. you at the end of the day, you know? So that's important. So you give a lot, I wanna talk about like, oh, I love your I love your social media. Like I, you are probably it's, one of my favorite Instagram pages that I it follow. Works out. Yeah, it works out a lot. You give a lot of free advice, first of all, and yeah. sometimes free Starbucks, y'all, you know, that'd be coming in handy. It is free Starbucks. Um, I'm gonna pull up your Instagram here on my page, so. Oof. Tell me a little, yeah. Tell me, <laughs> <laughs> tell me a little bit about how important marketing is. You have the budget. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Is I, I've only been in business for going. I'm gonna be three years in October. Mm -hmm. um, Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Advertising. If you do not have the proper marketing, advertising, or you're not allocating that budget, mm -hmm. you're playing yourself. Everybody's like, I'm just trying to grow organically. I don't care about that. Yeah. Um, when I first started out, I was doing just like $50 a month, $100 a month, just mm -hmm. trying to play with it. And you're going to hit a sweet spot eventually. So yeah. you just got to keep playing. You're going to be wasting money in the beginning, of mm -hmm. course. And so then I went up to like $200 a month, to $500 a month, to $1,000 a month. And now I'm 5000 a month on ads consistently. Wow. Um, but I've learned that side of the business myself as well. So not just the accounting side, but I've never outsourced anything. Yeah. I've never outsourced for my graphics. I didn't outsource for my logo. I've never outsourced for nothing mm -hmm. besides getting shirts made. Yeah. My website, I did it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, learning that side of it. You did was, your own website too? I did everything. Wow. Okay, everything girl. that the business has, I did it. Yeah. So putting that money into advertising, that was, that's how I've grown so fast. Yeah. I mean, we're getting 20 to 50 clients a month. Wow. New clients, and we only have maybe three or four that'll leave us a month. So our retention's really low. Mm -hmm. um, the main reason that a lot of clients are leaving is just due to economic issues, like their businesses aren't doing well, but um, you know, we, for yeah. the most part, we don't really have a client turnover. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and that's really, because of you know the amount of like effort that you put into like your marketing mm -hmm. and everything um and a lot of this like i was just looking at it like a lot of this is what i pay for when i'm asking questions to a oh yeah so they pay for this info yeah so i'm like you're just really giving out a lot of like free advice like a lot of people don't know like oh they used to knock me down for that yeah why are you posting all that when yeah. they could just you can make money off of this info why yeah. because if i post all of this they it know I know other things too. going in my head too. Yeah. So now they're really going to make a call with me because mm -hmm. this is just basic stuff. Exactly. And now they want deeper stuff. So yeah. they're going to try to be my client. Exactly. And when they are your client, it saves you and them a lot of time because they went and they already read all this mm -hmm. information. So they're prepared when they're bringing you their file, their documents oh, yeah. and vice versa when you're preparing stuff for them. So it's really important. Um, so this is like one of my favorite questions that I get a lot like as a business advisor um, and I'm sure that you get that you posted on here and maybe I'll have you touch a little bit on it so right now we're in tax return season so specifically businesses mm -hmm. how do we know what which one they file which business tax they file so like the LLC the S Corp like mm -hmm. how is that determined so typically if you file just an LLC you go to the Secretary of State and you just put yourself on there you know just 
starting a little business or something, mm -hmm. you are on your 1040. Mm -hmm. It's all done together. Your personal business, one return, it's just another page added onto it. That's just how I refer to it. Yeah. It's nothing spectacular. We just mm -hmm. add a page or two or three, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> but we just add a page. Now, if you and your homegirl and your cousin, y'all trying to get on a business, it's automatically a partnership. It's an LLC. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it's a partnership now, so that's how you file in. Um, so you know, it always goes off of what you're doing, and say now you register it as a corporation instead of LLC. Now you're on a different tax return or um, stuff like that. A lot of people ask, "Oh, someone told me to be an LLC S corp. How do I file that on the website?" That's not a business structure. Yeah. That's a taxation status, and so then we have to get into that conversation. So there's a lot of different forms that you can file, or different ways to file. It's just how you set the business mm -hmm. up, and that's yeah. where a lot of people struggle is they don't know what to set it up yeah. as, or what benefits them more, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But you can have a business register, yeah, with the LLC, yeah, for just at the bare minimum. minimum, at the bare minimum. Yeah, 100%. And then another thing that I really love about your social media that you post a lot are like things that um, you always get advice, like you could write your um, phone bill off or can you claim or write your, like, let's say you go out to lunch or you take a client out to lunch. Like, mm -hmm. what are some things that like, this mm -hmm. is a good one. Yeah, <laughs> what are some things like <laughs> most people don't know that you, that you can write off and what are some things that people mistakenly write off but you really can't? Oh, this is a great one. <laughs> it's tax season. Yeah. You can't write your mileage off from home to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, my God. A lot of people like, think that. I don't know why, but a lot of people think that. Because tax preparers tell them that they can't. Mm -hmm. See, the thing is, and I tell people, if a tax preparer tells you that they can get you a huge refund, mm -hmm. or if they tell you that you ain't paying no taxes, or if they're posting pictures of huge refunds, they doing something. Mm -hmm. um, because... How are you getting the twenty thousand dollar refund back? Yeah, you know, so yeah. it's kind of those things. They're writing off things that can't be written off, mm -hmm. um, and you're gonna get caught because yeah. you know when you do file a tax return, you do have to put what your business industry is on there. Mm -hmm. It's a code. Mm -hmm. um, ain't no way a beauty professional who does hair got thirty thousand dollars a mile. Yeah, like, like it's yeah. just not huge mm -hmm. red flag. Mm -hmm. um, so you know stuff like that. It's just there's so many things that I hear from those. It's just the mileage stuff. They can write off their gas for their car um, and just write it off that way or just a lot of different things. Or there's certain ways that you have to go about it on the tax return. You just can't put on a separate sheet gas mm -hmm. like, you know, or Wi-Fi mm -hmm. for your house. Like there's certain ways that you have to go about things. And mm -hmm. the normal person, I don't blame my clients, too. Like a lot of times when I do a men tax returns, I do it for free. Yeah. Cause this is a learning experience. You ain't know no better. Mm -hmm. And why would I punish you and charge you all these fees to amend your taxes? Because they told you that you believed them. They're a professional. That's like if a doctor told me I'm dying tomorrow. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. You dying yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not punishing people. I feel like charging them amendment fees and charging them all these fees because of someone else's mistake is punishing them. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of that. So that's another reason why we grown so much is you messed up just go to me they're gonna fix it for you they ain't gonna charge you extra mm -hmm. so kind of those things yeah. um you know but also educating on what real write-offs are mm -hmm. so like yes you can write off you know some of your phone bill um yes you can write off mileage and gas and oil changes if we go about it the right way yeah. yes we can write off some of your home mm -hmm. for whatever you're using for the office or space that you're using if you're shipping supplies Yes, we can do all of that stuff, but making sure that we go about it the right way and also not writing it off just because you can't write it off. Yeah. Because now you can't buy a house. Yeah, that's true. And we got we got a handful of those people coming in all the time. <laughs> My loan officer said, come here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what'd you do? You wrote your car off and you wasn't supposed to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't get approved for my mortgage tonight. So is it like is what's the hardest thing as an accountant? Or the mo let me. What's the most frustrating thing as an accountant that you have to fix that people come to you to fix? It's it's messing up the home ownership gap yeah. because I'm I'm pro community yeah so and I'm pro closing the home ownership gap in the minority community so you gotta pay the taxes to keep the income high so you can buy this house like I'm sorry but 
writing your car off or the mileage or the gas or whatever extra things that you can write off it's just probably not a good idea this year because you want to buy a house yeah. so just because we can't write it off doesn't mean we should right mm -hmm. um so when they come to me and they're like well my last tax repair they were black too mm -hmm. and they told me to write everything off and now my income was only twenty thousand dollars and i'm like mm -hmm. why would they do that because mm -hmm. you're not helping your community out yeah. and you're not we're trying to close the gap exactly. here and you're not closing the home ownership gap you're saving the money on taxes yeah but how are you gonna build gener generational wealth when you can't buy assets mm -hmm. that's what makes me Ooh, so that's mad a big one. That's you can't a big buy one. assets so and i tell my clients all the time even i tell musi i get on him about this all the time paying taxes until you have equity out here in these streets is an investment i'm sorry but it is it's an investment to pay your taxes because if you have the income on your tax return you can go buy anything you want mm -hmm. you can buy anything and once you have the equity and all the things that you you know all that out here you, you invest it yeah you're good mm -hmm. right so you know educating that piece of it that's how you have to think about it yeah at first is my taxes are an investment mm -hmm. keep the income high yes i love that no that's really true and so opposite of that now like as an accountant like what is like the most relieving thing like tell me like what a perfect client looks like like someone comes to you and you're just like oh, this is gonna be lovely and when they come to me right away <laughs> i love that yeah. when i'm their very first accountant very first everything <laughs> they're like hey yeah i'm registering for an llc next month mm -hmm. i haven't even done it yet mm -hmm. can you tell me what to do and how to get started mm -hmm. and that's like oh wow I can, I can just fix you. Yeah, yeah. You are just perfect. Yes. And I can just start educating start with them you. Yes. as we go. I love when people ask questions. Mm -hmm. I always tell clients, I'm like, you can blow my email down, mm -hmm. ask people questions. I said, because if you're asking questions, I don't have to fix it later. Yeah. So you're making my job easier by asking me 50 questions a day rather than not asking, you mess it up and now we got to fix it. Mm -hmm. So I always say, you know, ask question yeah don't go on tiktok <laughs> don't go okay, on instagram we touch base on that real quick okay we have come to, to talk me about first that. we have to talk about that so how do you feel about um you know individuals and this floating advice on social media you with can't the write tiktok the g-wagon <laughs> you, you like, can't write the g-wagon off i really <laughs> see the craziest <laughs> advice like on TikTok or like Instagram or reels and stuff like that and it makes me like because you know I, I I understand too like coming from the financial background it's like really frustrating when I see someone telling me like well, yeah people you know write your Mercedes off yeah and you could do this they know. like yeah, uh, they know better but they they post that stuff for the likes the views yeah, the shares because it does get a it lot. gets that it generates mm -hmm. that but they post like crazy stuff like yeah if you make 200 out a day that's do 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 and do yeah. the third and I'm like that's crazy if it was that easy to make two hundred dollars a day we would <laughs> we would all be balling yeah I'm like but that's you can't make that's not, yeah. that's not realistic yeah um I hate it mm -hmm. and I tell my clients that all the time I'm like if you see something on TikTok or real or whatever that stuff is um because I don't watch that stuff I don't even have TikTok because it just frustrates me yeah. Um, I'm like, send it to me mm -hmm. and then I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll send some good stuff. Yeah. Other times I'm like, that's questionable. <laughs> no, that's yeah. not. And what I do with a lot of clients is because a lot of them have come from other accountants that mm -hmm. told them bad info. Mm -hmm. I pull up the IRS publications and I send it with my answer. So mm -hmm. I say, no, you can't do it that way. This is why. And I send the actual, the law stating yeah. that because Sometimes they think I'm just BSing too, mm -hmm. because the other person did. So yeah. I pull it out. I'm like, this is what the IRS says. So like it. Yeah. On the IRS website, mm -hmm. this is right here. Yeah. This is what you need to do. Okay. So kind of those things too is, I'll say it, mm -hmm. but I also show the proof. Yeah. Because exactly, it's hard. It's, to, it's, yeah, it's written on there, you know, and everything. So, you know, within the black community. I love it. Like, you know, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is growing. Um, we're seeing a lot of businesses, business owners, black men, black women. Um, however, we're also seeing a lot of businesses failing. Yeah. Um, and it's because of like the lack of knowledge when it comes to specifically like them obtaining their finances, mm -hmm. um, having things on record, doing their taxes why do you think that is touch base on that 
we're not being taught that because if you look at like white households you know they're being taught those things they're being not even necessarily given those things but they're being brought into the business and a lot of the businesses that they're getting it's inherited yeah they grew up in the business so like with my son i keep him so involved in the business the boy is just <laughs> i feel bad funny. for him because he's yeah. like mom i need to file my taxes i'm like <laughs> he said well if you make 50 dollars of income you need to file i said you don't need to file for yeah. them dang on iron board things that you thought you sold that i lied to you about that did not sell um you know yeah. so kind of those things is let your kids in on it too like mm -hmm. if you have a business stop trying to be so like secretive with it and stuff and the thing is too black people don't like to talk about money with their friends keeping yeah and um i hate that mm -hmm. me and my friends i'm like yeah girl i made x amount of dollars today i made s month this year we re were very open and vocal about that too mm -hmm. um and that's another way of closing the income gap right because yeah. a lot of women or a lot of people don't talk about their income with other people mm -hmm. How, how I'm supposed to know that I'm getting paid a fair wage if I don't know what Rebecca mm -hmm. and so-and-so is making too. Mm -hmm. I feel like you need to have those conversations and have people that you're comfortable with to have those conversations because it's not a race. Yeah. It's, you know, I want to know, tell me what you're doing and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Like, let's bounce off of each other and make sure we're all growing and make yeah. sure that the income is there. Um, yeah, that's, that's important. The conversation and that leads me so I saw you're doing some you're active this year. You're doing some um really cool things. So I did see um on your Instagram you I believe it looks like you were looking for um where was it? Uh, you have like a small business group event, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually looking well, not looking. We are this summer um, going to start a business success program, and I want to start doing yeah. it annually. This year, I told myself I'm kind of stepping back from the business. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to be there, like doing stuff, but like not being so invested in like the growth because it's there. It's yeah. going to happen now. Mm -hmm. um, but getting more involved in community stuff, so mm -hmm. like you know, doing more press things. Um, networking partnering stuff like that mm -hmm. um and just kind of doing that side of it yeah so with the business success program i wanted to work with some minority owned businesses here um it's going to be seven weeks long mm -hmm. i've got a lot of people that want to sponsor and help and add to it so we have caterers that's going to provide food and snacks for free um people photographers that are local here are going to provide free headshots mm -hmm. for them um i want to make sure that we get them registered with their llc correctly so mm -hmm. i'll provide that provide their order their first business cards and you know just a big thing showing them how to do bookkeeping just wow. the basic stuff so seven weeks of every when weekend. does it start it's gonna start in june okay. i haven't picked an exact date yet mm -hmm. um a lot of people have been applying for it i've got yeah the this is on the website. this is huge like I'm, I'm like, helping with yeah good. registering for lc and eim learning about yep. your tax write-off business plan writing social media and content creation you gotta get those grants yeah absolutely because you can't get the grants yeah without that side of your business yeah and i tell people that they're like i don't need financial reports i'm like for the big grants mm -hmm. they ask for financial reports yes they do for and the they don't grants, realize yeah. that yeah you can get a 500 hundred dollar grant they're gonna give it to you mm -hmm. but if you want that twenty five thousand dollar grant and those big ones they're not gonna give it to you without you having bookkeeping done mm -hmm. or can prove that you've been in business for a year, whatever their mm -hmm. qualifications are. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do you think people don't scam? Yeah. Okay. When do the when does the application for this program close? Because I know a lot of people are gonna be asking. Because I think I reposted it and I had at least like ten people I think already asking. I put there. I, I said the thirty first. Yeah, March thirty yeah. first. Okay, so mm -hmm. you guys heard it. You guys have till March thirty first. You get mentoring for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um just a whole bunch of stuff and this is for any minority owned mm -hmm. men or woman yep. business yep. okay so we'll make sure we get you set up with quickbooks help you with some business cards mm -hmm. headshots um you know talk about content your marketing i'm big pro marketing oh, like yeah. if i had to wipe out all my budgets the first thing i'm starting with is my advertising budget yeah um, if my business starts going down tomorrow, it's the last thing I'm cutting this ad. Yeah. Very last thing. Um, 
people don't realize that. Yeah, it, how important that Oh, it's so is. important. Yeah. They just don't, they think social media is enough, mm -hmm. like just creating content. They'd rather allocate, you know, 500 a month towards a content creator. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why? Yeah. All you need is one real good post mm -hmm. and boost it. True. And they don't. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't register. Yeah. And then you got um, a brunch coming up on yep. the 26th. And, and you are one of the special guests, the Women's Entrepreneur mm -hmm. Brunch um, from 1030 mm -hmm. to 1230. Um, PM is that gonna be like a are you gonna be on a panel yep. um, okay so it's gonna be a panel we're gonna be um, answering questions talk a little bit about entrepreneurship um, the last one we had was really well um, that was more presentation based we felt like it went really good too it did mm -hmm. go really well a lot of women brought like notepads and were like writing stuff yeah. down um, but we want to be more interactive this time around um, asking questions and you know really being interactive with the women there mm -hmm. um but it was really nice a lot of women with different businesses got to come together got to talk to each other mm -hmm. um and as i always say in the caption when i post is like it's a safe place like like i said women don't talk about like their income or they don't talk about that side of stuff where you have this space where you can say yeah you know i feel like i'm stuck at only making forty thousand. Yeah. you know what did you do to increase your revenue because we're in the same industry you mm -hmm. know so it gives that space of no competition. I love that. Oh, I, I hate love the that. competition. Yes. I'm like, why can't we just, yeah. Why can't I just work with you? Why do I have to give you something to work with you or whatever? Like, yeah, it's and not... advice is free. Like, everyone needs advice, you know? And that's why I've been looking for another woman owned, like, accounting business here to work with. Mm -hmm. But it's been so hard. Well, y'all, if you want to. <laughs> If I'm like, I want to work real with someone. Deal. And you are also the real deal, you know, definitely. Um, but actually, we were talking about that. Like, mm -hmm. let's let's touch up on partnership. How far does that get you? It's going to get you pretty far. Yeah. Um, that's why I said, like, the competition stuff is so, it's not going to do nothing for you. Mm -hmm. And not being a personable person isn't going to do nothing for you as well because we're partnered with Solo Salons, mm -hmm. all of them here mm -hmm. in Minnesota. Yeah. Which is huge, y'all. That's like, huge. That's we're in the really newsletters. Big. We're doing a huge event with them in the fall. Um, they refer um, the owners of Sola when they mm -hmm. ask questions like, who do we go for accounting? Mm -hmm. They um, refer them to them. And that's actually how I found out. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to Sola. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client come to me and they're like, yeah, um, Aaron told me to call you. And I'm like, who's Aaron? They're like, mm -hmm. oh, they own Sola Salons. And I'm like, the solo salon people know me. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So you're out here making noise. You don't even know. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then I heard it again. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I do not know this woman. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let me reach out to her. And I'm trying to find her. I'm like, I don't, I'm like, okay. I'm just write the solo salon's page and just mm -hmm. see where it gets me. And it got me pretty far. Like we ended up talking. She's like super nice. She's mm -hmm. really nice. Um, she's super cool. Like it just worked out well. Yeah. And I'm like, put yourself out there. Reach out to people. Like. Mm -hmm it gets you so far it's yeah partnership so um are you introverted or extroverted both both okay yeah. so yeah both. so how 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 did you at first like when you were getting started like how did you start putting yourself out there like what i've been through this is my year doing it okay because i was more so when i started the business i was so focused on growth mm -hmm. that i didn't really care for partnership stuff mm -hmm. um until this year really mm -hmm. um i was just so focused on like scaling 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 which mm -hmm. i did now i feel like i did good i'm at a good spot we're organically getting a lot of clients i'm still going to keep with ads and all of that stuff mm -hmm. but i feel like now i can step away from making sure concepts um making sure the page is right making yeah. sure all these things are right because now i have a team mm -hmm. from my office and I built that yeah so now I feel like I got the foundation built where I can kind of step back yeah and you really side. did built everything from scratch because yeah. like when I met you and like you were moving into your uptown location I think mm -hmm. you had was it two people I had they were both part-time part you had both part-time and now you have full-time uh, everyone's full -time. everyone's full-time mm -hmm. um and it's just amazing just like seeing the growth and i remember you were already telling me like you sir i'm gonna i'm gonna grow like i'm gonna grow and she tripled <laughs> yeah we've grown since then 
Yeah, we tripled in revenue yeah. since October of 2022. Yeah. And it's been six months or so. Yeah. We tripled in revenue already. So, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. like amazing. And I know like with the Sola Salons, like that's huge. How did you feel like when you realized like. It's like, I'm a bad. Yes. Look that out. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. was like, I was like, okay. I'm like, well, I'm about to go um, grab me a glass of wine. Right. I'm about to sit on this couch. You know, I'm not a going out person. So that's why I'm like, I'm more of the introvert. Yeah. Like I'm about to go sit in the house yeah, and kick it and yourself. celebrate. Yeah. But I was like, period. Mm -hmm. And so then like all the other stuff started coming in too, where, you know, I have other, I have a lot of professional networks where, you know, um, two of the, um, black financial advisors of northwestern i'm the only person they refer to yeah period point blank yeah and vice versa the only people i ever refer i always refer black yes okay. you guys heard that because <laughs> we only support black over okay. here okay <laughs> I, I refer back to my community um it's important to see black people in a professional setting important. so i i push that as much as possible that's why everybody in my office is minority yeah because we're on lake street mm -hmm. we're on lindale like yeah. You see an accounting firm. I want you to come in and see people that look like you. Mm -hmm. So you can come here and talk about. Yeah, I have her cards about. all over my office. <laughs> like you come into our Lake Street Council. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> Victory Biz Solutions because we want the businesses like we support. I want the businesses that I support um, to go to someone that understands that looks like them, mm -hmm. that, you know, can really break it down to them, not use all this verbatim that we don't Big words. Cause that's really what gets, every, mm -hmm. it gets me lost when I sit down with an accountant and I'm like, what did you say? Like, what are you talking what is, about? Right. Like what is, you know, that? So, you know, so, someone that can just like, and you know, there are big words in this industry, but someone who can like break it down. And, well, like, you know, they always better. say if they can't break it down to literally like the basics, they don't know what they're talking yeah. about. That it's as simple as that. Like I get on Zoom with all my clients when we do like onboarding or stuff like that. I will go on the whiteboard setting on Zoom and I got chicken scratch all over. I'm like, yeah. so if you do it this way, this is how it affects you. Mm -hmm. I'm such a visual person. Yeah, if you can't break it down like that for your clients, you don't know what you're doing. Absolutely. Because you should be able to break it down to where they understand. And I have clients that are like, oh, I'm an escort. And I ask them every single time, do you even do you know what an escort is? Do you truly know what it is? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make you feel away, but I'm I want you to know what it is. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, every single time they say no. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a whole breakdown that I have to teach them what that stuff is. Um, yeah. Cause they just say, oh, you save money on taxes. It's not a good enough answer. Mm -hmm. That's not how you should explain things to people. It's yeah. their business. Mm -hmm. They need to know everything. Mm -hmm everything exactly yeah so you guys heard it if you're wondering like why should i go to victory Biz solutions compared to another accountant i mean the yes. difference is really simple you know it's authenticity and then it's also mm -hmm. like not only are you coming just to file your taxes or like you know do your bid to um, uncle sam but you're actually learning and you're obtaining knowledge for yourself you're understanding mm -hmm. your business and how to do it so you don't fail like you you mentioned a few times like bridging the gap within the community and I think that you're a huge part of that in this community here in the Twin Cities is bridging the gap because sure. when you do this correctly you're helping people buy houses you're helping people you gotta bridge the gap yeah and that's cars, my biggest you know, thing all of that you know mm -hmm. um that's whatever what the kids, so uh, building yes. for your kids like mm -hmm. that's like the most important thing is like, like our generation you know a lot our parents didn't know a lot of things so like now it's our job to like make sure our kids are good you know yep. helping them understand like credit cards like, aren't bad yes exactly That's financial one literacy. thing like financial they don't teach that in school no. but we got to teach that at home yep. you know it's not it's not taught like my son he has it all like planned out he's like when i turn 18 I'm gonna take half of my paychecks and pay my bills and the other half, I'm just invested. Smart. I said, okay. I said, well, you like to go on vacations, how are you gonna do that? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a Delta credit card, my flight's <laughs> gonna be free. I'm like, boy, bye. <laughs> like he's got so it smart, all right. Man. And he's like, I'm gonna have a Delta card. And yeah, like, and it's oh. because of like, you know, his household, he's learning, it's he's teaching hearing, the kids that stuff. Exactly. And understanding what investing is. So um, like with my son, what I do with him is he has his own bank account. Mm -hmm. He gets an allowance, mm -hmm. so he sees it in there, but mm -hmm. he has to see the money come out too mm -hmm. for his custodial accounts mm -hmm. or his brokerage accounts. So 
he realizes, oh, I have $50 in there. It's gone now. Mm -hmm. Or half of it's gone now because it has to get invested. Mm -hmm. So he understands that this is a normal process. It yeah. has to happen. You have to invest yeah. monthly or however you're going to do it. So he's seeing it now and understanding that stuff. And then when it gets to that point, it's not a pain in the butt because exactly. a lot of adults don't want to invest because they don't want to see the, that 200 the, the money gone but mm -hmm. they don't know that that 200 could easily turn into 200,000 or 200 right. million you know and that's so. what it's just not embedded you have to embed it in their heads young mm -hmm. because I'm a man. yeah I tell my clients all the time I'm like girl my priority if you think your priorities is messed up <laughs> girl I'm about to go on a vacation I still owe Uncle Sam a couple dollars <laughs> I'm like but we ain't gonna talk about it yeah exactly and I'm just as bad so I'm like don't look at me as like this superhero that just does everything mm -hmm. right I'm like I owe him too yeah <laughs> <laughs> I owe no, him too <laughs> I love that no um so I, we're gonna wrap this up with two pieces of advice. I want one piece of advice that you have for anyone watching this who wants to, um, who's in the same like industry as you or wants to be in the same industry as you. Like, what's a good piece of advice that you have? And the second advice for a client or a business owner, an entrepreneur who's um, just kind of at like an unstable place and doesn't know where to start. Obviously, they should start with you. I they know you should. don't say that, but um, they should. You know, give me two pieces of advice for each scenario. The first one, just for anybody that is wanting to be an accountant, or as I call myself, the people's accountant, because that's really how I feel sometimes, yeah. is the education piece. Mm -hmm. At home, I mean, I will sit and reread old accounting books that I have, like on my phone and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, or just sign up for tax classes randomly. I mean, I'm not getting nothing out of it. Like I'm not gonna make more money or yeah. whatever the case may be, but staying up to date on stuff, making sure I'm in the loop. I pay extra money for extra books just so I can have them in the office just mm -hmm. in case I need to refer to them. So always invest in the yeah. continuing education and learning and learning and learning as much as you can. Um, because the stuff changes so much. And even refreshing, even if you know it already, just mm -hmm. to make sure you're on top of it because a lot of times clients call and they wanna answer right away with mm -hmm. certain things and you need to know mm -hmm. that stuff. I mean, there's gonna be situations where you don't know everything and that's where I tell clients, I'm gonna call you and get back to you. But 90% mm -hmm. of the time, you need to answer for them people right then and there. Yeah. Um, and you can't do that if you're not learning yeah. and actively in the loop about all of these different things. So mm -hmm. making sure you do um, learn these things and also network, you know, have other accounts in your pocket. You know, they might not be as good as you or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, but they might know something mm -hmm. more than you do on a certain topic. You know, they might be really good with something. So definitely reach out to people. And for people that start businesses and don't know where to go, it's just research. Yeah. My thing is education, period. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. keeping yourself knowledgeable in the loop make sure you really know what you're getting into business wise because we have a lot of people who start businesses they come to us for services and they're with us for a year and they're like i didn't realize that there was all these parts to the business mm -hmm. i can't do it no more mm -hmm. or i didn't realize i had to save money for taxes and now they're garnishing my bank account mm -hmm. they don't realize that that's that side of it so make sure that you you know are knowledgeable before you jump into it and you lose money or you lose yeah. there's a lot of things you can lose if you're not doing it mm -hmm. appropriately so mm -hmm. i was going to ask questions yeah i don't ask questions that's a big one. i laugh sometimes i'm like why would you ask me i'm like okay <laughs> i'm like sorry but yeah. um <laughs> sorry i gotta get a kick out of that one but i'm yeah. gonna tell you what it is so yeah. ask the questions yeah. Invest in continued education. All business owners should invest in some kind of accounting class though, mm -hmm. or a bookkeeping class or something. Mm -hmm. Is um, that something you guys offer? For our clients, we do, mm -hmm. we do, we do our free consult. We have a 15 minute consult um, for new clients, prospective clients. But um, once they are the client, um, they're with us, they get monthly calls with us. That's included in their monthly packages that they pay. Um, you can also add on and do CFO services where we're more hands on. Um, but we have clients that email every other day. Hey, you know, I want to figure out how I can do this, that, and the third. Or I'm trying to apply for a grant. Do you know what documents I may need and stuff like that? So mm -hmm. they do ask those questions frequently. What's so. the most common question you got? Oh, I get a lot. 
I know you do. <laughs> do I need to pay quarterly taxes mm. or stuff like that? That's mm. a good question. All right. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> How much did you make last year? So it's yeah. like a lot of times I get asked questions where I honestly can't even give a real answer. And I don't believe in giving half answers mm. where then they hold on to it. Where I'm like, yeah, you do need to pay quarterly. Then come to find out. They told me what their gross mm. profit was and not what their net is. Mm. They don't pay to taxes. Yeah, yeah, right. So they tell me they're making that much. Oh, yeah, you, you do. I'm like, no, I got to see it before yeah. I tell you anything. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's what makes it hard to advice wise for yeah. people. It's, I don't like giving advice until it's in front of me. Mm -hmm. And then I go from there. Because otherwise, I'm like, Brittany told me mm -hmm. that I could. And I'm yeah. like, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I love that. No, thank you so much um, mm -hmm. for coming to eat and talk today, you guys. Um, where can people find you? Like, I know you said Lake Street and Lindale, but what's your exact address? 2839 Lindale Avenue South. Okay. And people can just like walk in. For the most part, I might not always be there because I do on sites with clients mm -hmm. or I'm out meeting with people and stuff like that. But we do have people in, off in office. Um, every day besides Wednesdays. I love okay, and we'll make home. sure that we link uh, her website, her mm -hmm. Instagram to our page. Um, all the information is gonna be there. Make sure it's taxi, make sure you get your taxes right. Get so it done. Get it done, get, get it done, it done with done her right. and her <laughs> team. Um, thank you again so much for thank coming. You. We appreciate you. And I always say we love to follow up with people in the future because I know you're going to be on to bigger and better things soon. Nice. Yep. So we're we'll going to touch base with you. We'll have another Eden Talk part two session to see you're probably mm -hmm. going to be somewhere in a Hawaii or Mexico on a Zoom call with us. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, you guys, yeah. like hot catfish, yeah. like what you doing six months later? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm in Bora Bora. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Quadrupled, you know, my sales and everything. So, yeah. So I appreciate you for coming. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you guys for watching this episode. Bye.